Hey ladies, this Trust is Nyoka Hall and welcome to Trust God, Trust God Cry Repeat Podcast. Cry repeat. Today Holy we Spirit, will be diving into a pretty different type topic. Our topic today is pick up that skillet and use it. <laughs> okay, I said it the way I meant it, but pick up that skillet and use it. Now, this is not a topic that's meant to bash you over the head with a proverbial skillet. It is, however, uh, meant to expose the works of feminism in today's culture. Now, if you and your husband have an agreement on this subject, just put your little fingers in your ear and hold it there until I'm done, if you like, because I'm not trying to go against anybody else's household. Um, I just intend to expose the unfruitful works of darkness so that women can enjoy what God has blessed them with. Let's dive in. Feminism has forced its way into so many areas of our life, and it's time to take over this demonically spawned agenda. We need to get rid of it. So many women are raised uh, seeing their mother or grandmother cooking in the kitchen. I know I was. I mean, I couldn't, I just couldn't wait. I don't care if it was a Saturday morning breakfast. It was just like a feast every time we sat down at the table. Um, So, hey, I would say even if my mom marinated a boot, I would probably try it. But I don't want to get really all focused. Um, But my mom and my grandmother had real skills in the kitchen. I like to think I inherited those (laughs) too. Um, But back to the point. Over the several, over the last several decades, excuse me, um, we've seen the perspective of women change. Careers complete them. Their resumes are full of experiences, and they have this delayed sense to, like, not get married, but rather obtain a college degree. Or you see the homemaker, homeschool mom and wife, and those titles aren't really enough. That's how the shift has happened. Um, The pressure is to try to work outside the home to truly prove your worth. This is not a disclaimer, but a clarifying statement that I'm getting ready to make. There is honor and a beautiful glorification to the Lord to prepare and serve your family a meal. Would you believe that so many women feel that it's somehow sexist to be expected to cook and to clean and to take care of their home? If you are one of these women, I'm sorry to tell you, you have been groomed by feminism. There are even women who call themselves Christian feminists. Well, that's like being a holy prostitute who sells bowls of hot ice to pay her way through life. Did you catch that? Christianity and feminism cannot be combined as an identity any more than a holy prostitute can sell her bowls of hot ice. Ladies, let's denounce anything that makes you focus on you and your home something to detest. That's all a part of Satan's plan to steal, kill, and destroy. Look at what the Lord gave, uh, look at what the Lord gave you and trust it in your hands. He really entrusted you with a household, a family, um, or if at this time you don't have kids, a husband, or, you know, It's so much more than just one little task or completing that and becoming bored with what you have. You don't have to be a casualty of feminism. I, I suggest and warn you against that. Don't be a casualty of feminism because it will have to face the judgment of God. And as a result and as a reward for all the havoc it wreaked on humanity, it will pay the price. Just like in Revelations 17, that's chapter 17, verse 5 through 8. And it says, on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon, the great mother of prostitutes. There's that word again. And the earth's abomination. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled greatly. But the angel said to me, why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast with seven heads and 10 horns that carries her. The beast that you saw was it was and is not, excuse me, I was stumbling a little bit and is about to rise from the bottomless pit and go to destruction. And the dwellers on earth whose name have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will marvel to see the beast because it was and it is not 
and is to come. That's Revelation 17, 5 through 8. I don't want to find myself among those names that have been wrapped up in the abominations and filthiness of this world. I really don't. Um, so let's go down a little further. Uh, now, I'm sorry. Now that we have identified the problem, I'm really passionate, guys. And I say guys loosely, of course, I mean ladies. I'm really passionate ladies, so sometimes I stumble a bit, so just hang in there with me. Now that we've... Uh, <laughs> there we go again now that we have identified um the problem let's get back to the need to pick up that skill and use it okay i said it right the second time the entrusting of the home to you you have been entrusted by the lord with your home with your husband with your children and those who are have not had children yet with your future children you taking the time to make something beautiful, something nourishing for a man that has worked all day and, you know, is all ready just to relax from all that hard work. That's a blessing. That's that's beautiful. And it's not something to be taken lightly. The things that have been, have been entrusted to you. OK, so also for your growing children, if those of you um, out there are not only wives, but have been blessed to be mothers it's, it's about blessing your children as well. It is the backdrop. A meal that you prepare on the table is a backdrop of safe conversation at the table. And it's the headliner to the gospel that is to be shared. Because when I'm, I'm learning as we sit around our table and they're enjoying a meal that I put before them. And, you know, we're talking and talking about our day and we're talking about the word of God. My husband delivers wonderful messages to our family, you know, when, at, after dinner. And it's just kind of like the, the headliner to the show. That's how I, I think of it. Um, but it's a tangible display of God's affection and love for your family. Yes, it's like a, it's like a hug <laughs> in the in a bowl, no, or or, or a kiss on a plate. <laughs> so, and that was like a really random thought that popped in my head, like, huh? Explain it like this. No, but it's really important. It's a tangible display of God's affection. Cause just think, what do you think your kids feel when you, they see you providing a meal for them every day? When they see you taking care of their clothes? When they when they hear how you are talking to them um, because you're taking what you're doing seriously and uh, because you're an intentional, you are an intentional godly woman. That just really, it really does just push the gospel forward. When the world sees that in the middle of the craziness that's going on, that you are not fearing what can come or what can happen, but you are trusting in the Lord and you're taking time to make something beautiful. We beautify things, ladies. We, we do. We don't tear things down with our own hands. We build up. But that's something for a whole nother day. Um, but it's a form of security to know that hunger at home can be quenched by you. And there's the time. Um, there's time and effort that's put into these meals. Those things are what gets your family's um, attention. That's what gets their attention. If you put some smoldering, bubbling, unidentified, <laughs> unidentified mess in front of them, I'm sure they're not going to feel. <laughs> I'm sure they're not going to feel that uh, that tender appreciation. But you put a warm bowl of some thick soup for this hot. Oh, so I say hot soup for this cold weather that we're having in the gray state of ohio right now or you put a pot roast in front of a man that's been working all day ladies i'm sure you'll get appreciation um but okay back to the point because i'm kind of getting off a little bit um it gives the satisfaction to a wife as well to, uh, to know that you are providing something that will let me let me go back i'm getting ahead of myself it gives the satisfaction to a wife that you are out providing so that she will in turn provide a meal to you. So let me get, let me explain that a bit. Your husband's going out, your husband's working hard, your husband is coming home and seeing you then provide a meal for him. He's providing all the things that he's supposed to for the household. You in turn are providing a nourishing and warm meal for him. It's a beautiful thing. It's like a, it's like an ongoing cycle that happens when we take honor, when we have honor in what we do and what we provide for our families. Um, let's see. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. I'm keep getting ahead of myself because I'm getting excited about this subject is really near and dear to my heart. 
because I really do believe that as a submissive wife, and I say that proudly because there's nothing wrong with submitting under my godly husband. There's nothing wrong with you submitting under your godly husband that you have in your household. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, but okay, it's the beauty. It's the beautiful appreciation of the order of God. That's another reason why I can say that I'm a submissive wife because it is in order with the will of God. The Bible lines out what a wife should be. The Bible, like it tells you verbatim how you should carry yourself. The Bible talks about being discreet. The Bible talks about being chaste. The Bible talks about being a keeper of your home. The Bible says a lot of things about how a wife should be. And one of those things is also um, submissive. But we'll get to that on another subject as well. I keep throwing out other podcasts before, <laughs> before it's time. Okay, let me get back to it. It's the beauty, like I said, the beautiful appreciation of the order of God. It is not demeaning or beneath you. I've talked to people and been around other people that it absolutely blew my mind um, that they felt somehow disrespected um, because they were expected as a as a woman, as a wife, to not only keep their house clean, um, but to provide a meal for their family and to also pick up that skillet and use it like just just not only wash the skillet after you use it um but they they felt it demeaning to be expected to cook and clean um and be a keeper of the home which i do not understand that um but i'm i'm here not to keep just throwing that out i'm here to encourage that there's honor in doing things god's way so i'll say it again it is not demeaning or beneath you to provide a meal for your family it is a place where you can shine like i'm telling you <laughs> it, it'll be like one of those meals that you put you know put in on the on the table and i promise i have my own theme music going on in my head like i feel like a star because i've provided this wonderful meal for my family um i get to show my skills a little bit and see if they like this more than they like that like it's it's really a it's a really a really fun and enjoyable and satisfying thing to be able to produce a wonderful meal for my family. It's another avenue of soul satisfaction is what how I put it. It's an honor. So take the time to learn from another lady. Um, if you, it's important to have a tribe too. I'll say that it's important to have ladies that you can go beyond the surface and be friends with. It is a beautiful thing. It is a necessary thing as a blood bought believer in this day and age, you need ladies that you can talk to, not ladies that you only are yes people to like, yes. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. And you can't get beyond that. No, you need beyond the surface real ladies that you can say you know what i really hate that i really hate that i don't like it or hey this is how i'm really feeling or hey i'm struggling in this area can you pray for me or um just the simple hey i was thinking about you how can i pray for you this week we need that we really do so will you accept the honor that is bestowed on you or bestowed to you or will you give it to another will you give that honor to mcdonald's to sit and produce some soil i said soil not soil but soy it tastes pretty much the same but soy feel nonsense for your family will you will you give it to bob evans to to produce a meal and i'm not saying that you never can get anything fast food or never can but take every opportunity to provide a meal for your family because what i'm telling oh this was not even a part of my notes but I will share it because it just popped in my head. Okay, so one day we were kind of like rushing and trying to go between, you know, activities. And um, it was a day where I'm just like, okay, we're going to go to McDonald's. We're going to get some food. Um, and we're just going to, we're going to have a meal together or in the car before we go somewhere else. And I looked on, and I think they've changed the packaging since, since then, but it's on the point. So I'm going to st stick with me, stay with me. Um, and I looked on the box of an apple pie. And it actually, <laughs> it actually said, and I don't want to mess up the wording. It actually said uh, something along the lines like, uh, we made this for you because mom didn't have time to or something like that. And I felt low-key disrespected because it's like, 
huh you could have said made this for you and left it like that like oh okay i feel treasured you know i got a little box of apple pie whatever but it actually it actually mentioned the reason they produced this product because i like someone else didn't have time to um so that is something i'm just like i don't understand that like will you give that to another person will you give that honor away Will you allow them to put whatever they want in their food and give it to your family? Or will you take the time to find something delicious, find something as nutritious as you possibly can, and literally bless your family, bless your husband who's been working all day and all like who provides for y'all, you know, more than just financially, the one that washes you over in the gospel. And I say it like that because that's how my husband explains it. Like he takes his job seriously. I take my job seriously as being a wife and mother, as being a submissive wife. Will you take the honor that is bestowed to you to be a keeper at home, and pick up that skillet and use it or will you give it to another that's a really good question to end on and until next time i will say remember to trust god cry repeat god trust bless god, you trust god cry repeat trust god cry repeat trust god cry repeat trust god cry repeat